do that, let me just introduce myself. I'm Siva Devaki from uh, MassMailer. I co-founded uh, MassMailer uh, several years back. Uh, we've been a Salesforce partner for over 12 years. And uh, with MassMailer, it has been um, more than four years now, and officially as a company, it's been uh, three plus years. And uh, not really talking much about MassMailer, though, even though we have to get into the product, uh, but I would really like to uh, highlight uh, some of the email deliverability best practices in uh, today's uh, conversation. All right, let's take a look at uh, what is email deliverability? What can we really do to make sure that we get the best out of our email strategy, right? Okay, so uh, the areas of discussion today uh, three, uh, I've kind of highlighted uh, three parts. One is the deliverability itself, reputation, and the compliance, yeah? And uh, uh, just in layman terms, what is deliverability, right? So when you're sending out email, you want to make sure that the emails are getting into the inbox. That's all what it means, right? You want to make sure that somebody is receiving your email. Why is it really a complex topic? Uh, because the... Uh, the spam, the spammers uh, are prevalent in the past uh, 20, 25 years, ever since the internet uh, came in and, you know, uh, people are trying to hack uh, things and uh, send out our spoof emails, so on and so forth, right? And also the email marketing, there's a lot of uh, abuse uh, that happened. So the deliverability has become complex because of a uh, lot of uh, spam filters around the world, right? And how do we really get about uh, the deliverability issues and how do we really make sure our emails are gonna uh, get into the inbox is uh, you know, a little topic that we can talk. And the reputation uh, meaning, so when you are saying that, hey, I belong to XYZ company and I'm sending an email from XYZ.com, uh, you need to prove that you are from that and uh, make sure that uh, your domain and IP is not blacklisted because a lot of spoofers, again, uh, people can, uh, um, you know, basically send out emails from your own domain uh, somehow, and um, they can still act as if it is you. Uh, so how do you really uh, make sure that your domain and IP is uh, reputed and not blacklisted? So this is another uh, topic we're going to talk about. And the most important thing, the compliance. So it has become a, a major issue in the past uh, few years. Again, uh, the Europe has come up with their own um, uh, the uh, spam compliant laws called uh, GDPR in the recent year. And the can spam has been there for years for a long time. Uh, and every country are coming up with rules and regulations um, just to make sure that uh, everybody is following the email compliance. Yeah. And again, talking about a uh, little bit more in depth about deliverability. Uh, so the four things that I've listed here, uh, very, very important. Uh, there are many things that are important beyond these four things, but uh, you know we can't really talk about everything. So let's just focus on a few things here. The content. Uh, why is the content uh, very important? Because we, we keep writing emails, but we do not know whether the content is really good or bad. Uh, do you have any spammy words? We don't know. Uh, so how do we really uh, analyze our content and make sure that it's not uh, really getting into the spam filter? And the list, uh, so this is very important, even though we safely assume that our list is uh, quite clean, uh, but what happens is, uh, you know, every three months there is kind of an attrition, people are leaving the company, uh, but you, st you don't know, and you're still sending emails. And maybe somebody closed their email account, you do not know. So you've got to really make sure that your list is always clean. Um, you know, every few months you want to make sure that you clean up your database. And also every new email that you're inputting your database, you want to make sure it's not um, invalid. Uh, we actually, I mean, you should actually go beyond the validness. You got to really find out if there are any spam traps. You also need to find out if there are any spammers uh, who would like to click on that spam report button all the time. Whenever they see something, marketing email, you want to kind of uh, make sure that you don't have those kind of people in your list. Um, and also uh, the short-lived emails, meaning some people try to create fake emails or maybe short-lived emails. You don't want to really send emails to them. So there are many things that you can do when it comes to the uh, the target uh, the screening process. And the uh, final uh, two points, it's very important. Uh, again, we talked about it at a high level, saying that uh, when you are sending out email from xyz.com, 
you got to authenticate and prove that it belongs to your own domain. Uh, there are certain um, uh, technological frameworks that have come in, uh, you know, in the past uh, 15 years, uh, companies like Yahoo, AOL, and Google, Microsoft of the world, they have come up with a lot of uh, uh, frameworks in the world, and um, you could uh, safely, um, you know, define those uh, DNS records. We call this uh, DNS records, and then make sure that those are authenticated. Uh, I'll show you how it looks. Uh, you know, I don't want to really get into too much technical details here, but uh, you know, assume that. You just need to authenticate yourself that you are the domain owner or you belong to the domain. Uh, and again, um, the IP address is very important. When you're sending out email from an email server, every server has uh, an IP address. Uh, if you are going with uh, you know, uh, traditional ESPs, um, you want a name, but uh, there are many of them who are uh, email, email service providers. If you're sending it through them, uh, it's important to make sure that you're getting a dedicated IP address. Otherwise, uh, if you're on a shared IP address, you do not know who are all using that uh, shared IP address and uh, how good or bad it is, or how good or bad those emails are uh, that are sent by the other people. Uh, so it's always a threat to use the shared IP address. So want to stick to the dedicated IP address. Talking about reputation, uh, we got to stay off blacklist. And how do you really get blacklisted? Uh, it could be many reasons. Uh, let's say you're using a domain. Uh, it's a brand new. It's not even warmed up. It's just been purchased uh, recently. Maybe you don't have a security certificate. Uh, maybe the, the settings on the server itself are wrong. Uh, so it is very easy to get blacklisted. Or if, even if it's um, a domain that has been there for a long time, uh, but again, if you have not really done the necessary uh, DNS setup uh, to secure your domain, uh, you may get into the blacklist. Or maybe you're sending out email to uh, you know the list that is uh, you know most of them are invalid, or many of them are bouncing, like thirty percent bounces. Right there, you're gonna get blacklisted. So it's very important to follow the uh, best practices to make sure that you're not blacklisted. Even if you're blacklisted, there are ways to get out of it. Uh, you can uh, contact the respective organization to uh, make sure that uh, you are innocent and you've done a mistake and you are going to rectify the mistake and make sure it's not going to repeat. So you can come out of the blacklist even if you're blacklisted, just to let you know. And um, honoring the opt-outs is very important, meaning you're sending out email uh, to someone, uh, assuming that it's a marketing email, yeah? I mean, if you're sending it to uh, your own, um, um, like, customers who are maybe students in this scenario, that's okay, understandable. You may not need opt-out in many cases, uh, but if it's more like a marketing thing, I think you would want to put an opt-out and honor it, meaning uh, immediately flag that in your database to make sure that you're not sending the email once again to them. Um, you know, there are uh, multiple ways to do this. Uh, you know, most of the email providers would uh, have this kind of a framework already. You just start to follow whatever the syntax that they provide to you. Yeah. Uh, there's something called subscription list. Uh, if your ESP or the uh, service provider is providing that um, uh, the email preference is kind of an option, I think that's another way to go about. Yeah. But making sure ending the opt outs is very, very important. Uh, talking about complaints, uh, so again, when you're acquiring a list, uh, you need to make sure that they uh, opted in into your email list. How do you do that? You can take a consent form and have them fill up the form online and then check a box. Uh, whether they read the content or not, at least they'll uh, click on a button saying that, hey, I'm uh, happy to receive email from you, right? That could be one way. Or maybe you've gone to some, some sort of a trade show and you met people and uh, they give you a business card. It's more like an opt-in kind of a thing. So make sure that you have an opt-in list. It's important. And uh, make the opt-out process very easy. Uh, and it should be, you know, a click of a button. They should be able to just opt out. It should not be a cumbersome process saying that, hey, contact us for uh, unsubscribe. And that becomes uh, a little risky for you. And they may end up just clicking on a spam button when you're sending out email. So make the opt-out process very easy. And the signature line is very important, meaning whenever you're sending out email, uh, make sure you got uh, a picture or maybe uh, your phone number, contact information, company information, and the company address. Uh, so have that signature line in all your emails. Uh, that's a uh, compliance that you would really want to follow. 
And uh, the from domain, which we talked about, uh, need to be authenticated. So if you belong to an university or an institute, uh, most likely you end up just using the uh, the email domain that is provided to you. Uh, but that needs to be authenticated so your IT team can take care of it, um, you know, with the help of the that you're using. Right. So these are the high level, uh, you know, bullet points that I had uh, that you really want to uh, make sure that you follow whenever you're uh, sending out emails to students or whatever the purpose is, whether these are marketing emails or transactional emails, you would want to make sure that you follow certain uh, rules and regulations. Uh, now, talking about um, the product itself, MassMailer, uh, how we can really help, um, you know, what is MassMailer is all about and how we can really help is something I'm actually going to talk about today and also give you a little bit of a demo about uh, certain tools that we have. Uh, what is MassMailer? It's a native Salesforce app through which you can send, uh, whether it is single email or mass email, um, you can send out to uh, any standard or a custom object, you can send email alerts as well, you can attach files as well. And uh, there are certain tools that we provide, uh, the email deliverability tools, not just the emailing. Uh, whatever we talked earlier, uh, whether it is uh, authenticating your domain, uh, whether it is uh, looking at your content, uh, um, those kind of tools are available within MassMailer. So meaning uh, we not only help you to send emails, uh, we help you to uh, successful in your email strategy. Uh, talking about uh, you know why mass mail or why not just Salesforce, uh, I'm sure most of you would know this, but I just want to kind of highlight a few uh, few points here. Uh, Salesforce is a great CRM, but if you have to really use that as a, a emailing tool, uh, there are limitations. Uh, you can always go with a marketing cloud or a per dot kind of a thing, but that could be an overkill for most of the organizations. If you're uh, if you're needed just to send mass emails in a simple manner. Um, you know, you really don't need a, a full-blown email marketing automation tool. Uh, so looking at uh, some of the limits, yeah. One is a daily limit. That's a 5,000 daily limits is a big pain. Um, also getting the granular statistics on the email events such as opens, clicks, spams, bounces, and invalids, and all of that is uh, not there uh, by default in Salesforce. And uh, email deliverability issues, as we talked, uh, you know, nothing you can do within Salesforce uh, without any tool. Uh, and getting a dedicated IP address is very, very important. As I said, uh, you, you can't really get that with Salesforce, so there's no deliverability support as such, uh, other than just, uh, you know, uh, maybe authenticating your domain. That's all what you could do. Uh, tracking emails is very important when you're actually sending out through workflows, so that's uh, a great feature that MassMailer provides. Uh, and also sending out email to, uh, you know, any object. Uh, for example, if you ever needed to send out email to opportunities, you can do that. Uh, having a subscription group for the email preferences is very important because when you want somebody to unsubscribe, uh, you don't want them to unsubscribe from all of your emails, for example. Uh, it could be, hey, um, give an option, you know, uh, if they don't want to receive marketing emails, fine, uh, give them an option to opt out for marketing emails such as you know, um, uh, marketing emails or donation emails or uh, course uh, kind of a communication or advisory communication, whatever, you can create those subscription groups. Uh, if you ever end up using multiple domains, I'm not sure again, not every customer may, uh, would need it, but I've seen a lot of customers doing this. Um, you know, sometimes you may have a separate email domain, right? Uh, if you want to have multiple domains, uh, you can actually do that with MassMailer. Uh, and also, if you are sending out uh, on behalf of someone else, like a flexibility of the sender email, you could do that. Uh, and also, we, we can offer the large volume of emails, um, you know, millions of emails if you want to send per month, that's okay. Uh, a beautiful email template builder that we got uh, through which you can actually just uh, build templates in no time uh, with, uh, without knowing any HTML coding. Uh, and using a process builder email alerts, you can actually create a drip campaign, so that feature is available to last week. Uh, and how do we really help the higher ed? Uh, I didn't really put this slide in um, in the beginning. I uh, kind of want to kind of set stage and uh, want to kind of highlight uh, what we can really offer to the higher ed um, uh, institutes or universities. Uh, so one is the student communication itself uh, for the student advisors, maybe in the recru recruitment process, maybe in the donation management or internal employee communication, or any kind of marketing newsletters, announcements that you need to make. 
uh, you know, and go beyond that, right? If you can have transactional email alerts and you want to track them, uh, you could actually do that. For example, the student application alerts or support ticket email alerts, whatnot. Um, and it's uh, native to Salesforce. It's quite easy to use. So there's not really a, a learning curve uh, for the uh, usage itself. And it's uh, quite scalable. Uh, you can have hundreds or thousands of users in MassMailer, no problem. Uh, on top of it, we support the file attachments and also drip campaigns and advanced uh, statistics uh, uh, for you to compare your campaign performance. Okay. And uh, some of uh, the notable uh, universities and institutes that we work with, University of Colorado, uh, Florida Polytechnic University, University of Arizona, and uh, Mind and Life Institute, and a few more that are in the pipeline that we're working with. Okay. And then uh, getting into a quick demo, uh, I would uh, focus on the email deliverability thing uh, because that's a topic. And also, I would uh, kind of go through the MassMailer app uh, with the Outreach Wizard. I mean, there are many features in MassMailer, but I think we'll just stick to uh, one of the features here because I want to leave some time for the Q&A question and answers, yeah? Okay. All right. Let's quickly get into the demo. Okay, uh, so talking about email deliverability, how do you really test whether the email that you're gonna send is uh, deliverable or not? Uh, so we have a tool called MassMailer Email Monitor. Uh, you can come in here. Uh, you could do this test before you're actually sending out email, uh, meaning running the campaign. Uh, and we are gonna have this uh, executed runtime as well. That feature is coming in the future releases. So you can uh, pick up uh, the university that you want to. And let's say you're sending out email to maybe a um, thousand. And uh, where are you sending? Uh, you can uh, have the specific region or you can have the country. Um, and uh, you can also pick up uh, what is your uh, template that you can use. And the template uh, could be uh, whether you built that natively in Salesforce. Uh, plain HTML, or maybe you actually uh, use MassMailer template builder, it doesn't matter. And then pick whatever the language may be. And then you just have to click on this button called uh, Test Email Deliverability. And that's actually going to submit this job behind the scenes to the backend engine, which is actually going to process this particular email and uh, look at all the spamminess and everything. So I um, we'll have to wait for a few minutes for this to come up. So uh, let's not wait. Uh, what we could do, we could actually take a look at one of the existing reports that I've taken, right? And uh, let's uh, kind of analyze what we got here. Uh, so you would actually see uh, the snapshot summary. Um, you know, how are you doing uh, when it comes to the region? And uh, how are you doing in the industry? Uh, even though I think industry is missing in this report, but it will show the specific industry uh, when you actually run it uh, for your own industry, and it's uh, gonna look, uh, it's gonna show you uh, the deliverability percentage, and um, the rest of the percentage, which is non-deliverable, meaning that's gonna go to the spam filters. Uh, so it's 82.32 percent uh, is deliverable, rest of 17.68 is non-deliverable, and it's uh, highlighting some issues out here. You can see the content issues and the infrastructure issues. Uh, so let's take a look at the content issues. And it's uh, highlighting uh, some of the words and some of the phrases. And it also gives you, uh, if uh, there's a word that is actually having an issue, it highlights um, what is recommended and what words are discouraged. Uh, and also it highlights the uh, content uh, or the phrases where you have the problem. Uh, that way you can actually take a look at it and um, uh, correct it. It uh, also gives you if there's any issue with the coding and layout. And if you're using a um, mass mailer template builder, uh, most likely you can just ignore this. Um, and then uh, when it comes to the link quality, 
Again, if you're having any links in your email, uh, if those are good or bad, uh, unfortunately, I don't have links uh, for you to show in this particular report, but if there any um, problem with the external domain links that you're using, uh, if those are blacklisted, it actually shows you that it is uh, blacklisted. Um, an example, you're working with a customer uh, who had a logo hosted in a, a third party website, uh, which was given by the marketing agency. And they've been using that for years and they didn't know that the particular domain is actually blacklisted till they really used our tool and trying to analyze the content. And they were like, oh, wow, we've been using this for years. We didn't know. Uh, so that's how they could e easily uh, rectify that particular problem. And then um, also we get into the infrastructure issues. Uh, this is where I uh, talked about uh, the, your IP address in the domain. If it's blacklisted, it actually shows that uh, uh, in this list, RBL. Um, and then uh, if there's any whitelist, it also shows. If you wanted to actually understand each and every specific um, the topic, you can actually click on that. It gives you uh, the real-time blacklist, what is it all about, and how do they really work, and how do you really prevent a delist if at all you get into the problem. And you can actually uh, get into the complete guide uh, so that you can actually learn about uh, the email deliverability. Um, and uh, you can actually get into every single topic and understand uh, you know, what you are supposed to do uh, to make sure that your email is getting delivered. Let's just close this. And uh, so talking about uh, this infrastructure, so we look at your IP and the domain. We also track where the email is coming from and where is it getting delivered. And look at your SPF records. So SPF is nothing but your uh, sender policy framework. And uh, that's again, not really getting into the details. All you're saying is by creating the SPF DKMD mark, you're um, proving that you belong, I mean, you belong to so and so domain and that is owned by you. So that's all what you're gonna say to the internet world, right? We help you when we onboard you uh, to make sure your SPF is good, the DKM is good, and your DMARC is also good. So all of that gets highlighted um, right here in the tool, okay? And then uh, complaints, uh, we talked about it. Uh, so we make sure you we analyze your cookies. If there's any problem, we highlight those warnings as well. And uh, most important, the previews. So how do you know that your email is actually rendering properly in the email client that your recipient is using? So it's very important. Uh, otherwise, uh, people may just click on the spam button because the format is uh, like a garbage, right? Uh, so we, it happened to us recently and we sent out an email. It was a custom HTML we recorded. Uh, we didn't really analyze the tool. Uh, by the and uh, somebody reported saying that, hey, I'm using Outlook, but it's not good. Uh, so then we went and uh, fixed the problem. So it's very important for you to actually open up the specific uh, client and see how is it rendering on that uh, particular um, the device. Uh, and anytime you want to request for more web client or a desktop client or maybe the mobile, uh, you just have to click on that specific uh, uh, the um, uh, image there and then it's gonna render real time on that particular device and then give you the report. Uh, so take a look at all the major uh, email clients that you think uh, your students are going to use and make sure that the layout is good. So this is kind of a very important feature for you to really have uh, when it comes to like analyzing the email that you're sending. And by now, that uh, this is actually finished the uh, analysis. And um, again, this is just a test. So it has got some score. Uh, you can see that it's below average. And, uh, talking about the uh, deliverability profile, it's given 70 points and seven deliverability and best of it is uh, some issues with the content. And, uh, maybe, um, yeah, the only content is issue. Yeah. Now, um, just to go, just to get into a little bit more details on uh, how we really do this authentication behind the scenes. So if you own a domain, you let us know what email domain you're actually going to use. We would create the the authentication records one for the domain other one for the link and the third one for the ip address uh, it's going to look like this so basically um if i show this to you i think um, you know some of uh, you may understand it's a dns record that you need to enter uh, your uh, hosting provider uh, you would just say hey this is my uh, domain and uh, i'm actually using our servers that is we use uh, sendgrid behind the scenes so uh, going through this server, so I'm authenticating it. So that way, 
when uh, the recipient servers are receiving emails, even though it is coming from the sendgrid.net, they know that, okay, it's actually authorized by mass mailer, uh, and I'm gonna deliver this because they approved that it belongs to them, right? Uh, so those are the, um, uh, this is actually the SPF, I mean, the DNS records that we put, and this is the domain keys, the DKM record. Um, and then uh, if you want to, rather you should brand uh, your link. Uh, whenever you have any links in your email, you should make sure that you're also branding them. How do you do that? It's simple. Uh, you don't need to do anything as um, other than just having the link um, that is in the email template. And then we are actually going to brand it with the, the, uh, the value that you actually provide here. Even though it is getting um, delivered to SendGrid, that's okay. Uh, the recipient server would know that. And the third most important thing is the IP address, as I mentioned. So we do provide the dedicated IP address, uh, and then we do assign that at runtime. I mean, not runtime, when we onboard you. Uh, it gets assigned to whatever the user that we provide to you, and then it would be flagged against uh, a specific domain that you're actually going to use. Uh, if you have multiple domains, that's no problem. Uh, we'll assign one IP address for each and every um, the, the domain address, um, and then it should be good to go. Uh, there's an advanced concept of IP poll. I think when I'm actually demoing mass mailer, you would understand uh, what it's all about. Um, so this is about the authentication. And um, when it comes to actual uh, email verification, um, now that I'm getting into the details, but I'll just show you what uh, we offer. Um, this is basically uh, a button on the lead or a contact or any custom object that you see called mass mailer email verify. When you click on that button, uh, we actually validate the specific uh, email address and enter that, uh, the verification date and the verification status and the substatus. And if it's invalid, we actually flag that contact or uh, lead as invalid. Um, in the upcoming release, we support uh, any object uh, so this may be just a related list. So basically, we provide this uh, verification tool right within Salesforce. That way, uh, you can clean up your list uh, before sending out email and make it a practice every three months or so. Right. So that's about uh, the uh, you know the specific email deliverability, um, the features of what Mass Miller has got. Um, now that we got a little bit more time, I'm going to spend um, uh, maybe a quick uh, demo here about Mass Miller. Um, again. Mass mail has a lot of features, but I'm actually focusing on only one important uh, feature that most of the users may be using. Um, I know the uh, campaign feature is there in Salesforce. We do have an integration with the Salesforce campaign as well. So let's talk about the basic thing. Yeah. So list views is a custom object in Mass Mailer. You can create a list view uh, by giving a, a specific name to it. Let's say I'm going to give a um, contact view October uh, 4. Yeah. And uh, you can select uh, what object it is. Uh, as I said, we support any object that's got email field in it. And then uh, you got to select the filter criteria. And this is quite advanced. You can select filter criteria uh, from the object itself or the parent. Uh, you have advanced uh, filter type, uh, a conditional logic if you need it. Or you can also filter on the child object. So for example, student is an object and then student application is uh, maybe um, uh, a custom object that you created, you can actually filter by the application object itself, which is a child record. So let's just go through a simple scenario here. Um, I'm gonna say, hey, uh, this uh, email field, and then um, maybe um, I would say, hey, belongs to, or it equals to so and so value, and then I would just do a preview, and I got one record, and save this. So this becomes your list view. Right, and uh, once you have the list view, then the next step is to go and uh, create your uh, email template. So we have a, a template builder that is native to Salesforce, and uh, this is a, a drag and drop editor. You may ask me, hey, uh, do you support uh, uh, Salesforce email templates that we created already? Yes, the answer is yes. If you already have something, as long as it's not uh, using any uh, header and a footer that's uh, that's created by Salesforce. Uh, it's a HTML or a text, uh, we do support it. Uh, so let's go ahead and try to create the template. And uh, just talking about the base template and email template, the difference is if you have, if you ever have uh, like a need where in which uh, the template would have 
some common sections, for example, your header and the footer is always going to be common, right? Uh, so in that scenario, you can actually um, just create uh, a template uh, with a header and a footer uh, and then provide that to your users and then let them uh, actually uh, create uh, the real email template uh, using that uh, the base template. So I just created this uh, in a base template, as you can see. Uh, and I'm actually going to show you how to do this, but this is the concept behind the base template that you can create a template uh, and then you can give it to the users a base template and tell them to just reuse the same one and they can always change um, any anything that they wanted. Uh, let's say you want to create a template right here. Uh, let's call this as a, a demo on October 4 template. And uh, let's say my uh, uh, newsletter for October 19, 2019. And then here we have a, a way for you to actually uh, select any um, uh, mode field. I uh, just start to select the object and uh, say, I want to know what is the mode field for my first name. Uh, I'm going to say done. And that gives you the mode field. All you need to do is just copy paste that value, right? And now, uh, talking about uh, the actual template builder itself, you see that there are three uh, uh, sections here. One is called content. Uh, you can uh, create a text image button divider social HTML video. And the next one is the rows, in which you can actually create, um, uh, you know, it could be one, uh, one row containing one column, two columns. Uh, three columns or up to four columns. Uh, so you can have uh, different widths as well. Uh, let's drag and drop uh, some of this uh, here. I'm actually going to close some extra windows here uh, so that I save this CPU. Okay, so um, going to the next row, drag and drop, drag and drop and drag and drop. And you can also have the settings such as uh, the actual content width can be increased or decreased. You can have a different background color, you know, various options. Let's say the top one is your image and the next one is uh, a divider. And here you have a, a say video. And let's say this is your uh, text. And this is your Divider. And let's say this is your uh, social. Yeah. And now each and every content uh, element will have its own properties that you can actually set. So let's say we pick up a logo and if you ever wanted to change certain properties, uh, you can change that. For example, uh, the width can be changed. Uh, and you can actually reduce it, uh, and you can also um, align it to the left or right. Um, you know, very, uh, you know, different uh, properties that you have, such as alternate text. Maybe you can actually have a link uh, when somebody clicks on this image. You want that to go to a specific um, uh, web page. You can actually do that. Uh, and also you can have padding around it, you know, uh, various different uh, properties. And um, for video, again, the same thing, you can actually have the YouTube video embedded um, or maybe the Vimeo. If you have hosted a video on a, a separate um, website, that's fine too. You could actually do that. And then um, uh, you can also have the padding done uh, so that's quite possible. Let's say this is your, this is your uh, text. Um, you can actually have um, a merge field embedded, the one that we were trying to insert. Let's say this is your merge field. Let's pick this, and you can have the merge field embedded right there, right? So this is a kind of a text feature, I mean, text editing features that you have. Let's say the uh, video that you want to embed, uh, maybe um, 
um, uh, video on YouTube. You can just copy paste that and go to the specific uh, property and then embed that and that brings up the video, right? Same thing with the social. Uh, you can actually have uh, any social icons. You can delete or add more. Uh, you can actually have different color uh, if you don't like this. Uh, you know, and where is it pointing to the Facebook, the specific link URL can be uh, entering all of that. And then save this, so this becomes your target um, uh, template, and save it to Salesforce by clicking the button, uh, so this can be used, right? Once you got the target list, and once you got the template, all you need to do is just go to your outreach wizard, and it's a step through process. Uh, as I said, we have an integration with campaign. It looks exactly the same thing. It just you click the campaign and then come to this page. Uh, lack of time, I may or may not be able to show that, but let's just go to this quickly. You can see that the campaign name is uh, auto-populated. Right now, we provide email, but we are opening up SMS, SMS, voice, and WhatsApp soon in the coming months. And then go to the next step. You say, hey, this is my uh, target audience, and I'm pick, uh, picking a contact object. You see course, yeah? course is a custom object. So you can support any custom object as well. And then uh, you just say, hey, I'm gonna pick one of my uh, views and I'm just picking something randomly uh, for the testing purpose and then go to the next step. And uh, the next step is where you're actually gonna provide the specific email template that you're gonna use. Uh, again, you select what folder it is uh, stored. And these are the folders that you already have in Salesforce and the specific uh, email template that you created. Uh, and then, uh, you know, we have the advanced data, basically all options. And uh, you, you can also add the merge field by selecting from here. Uh, we have an option to do A-B testing if you want alternate subject. We also have the preview text feature. Uh, most of you know what is uh, email preview text is. You can just enter whatever the text may be, and that becomes your preview text. Uh, so at runtime, if you want to actually make some changes to uh, your um, the email that you uh, email template that you put, that's fine. Make those changes, and you just save it, uh, and then this becomes your uh, final email template. And you just have to go to the next step, uh, where in which if you want to uh, attach any files, you can do that from uh, uh, the storage that you already have in Salesforce. So you can upload it from computer. You may ask me, hey, can I upload from my Dropbox? Right now, that's not there. Maybe in the future, we would support, um, you know, other, um, yeah, um, other storage as well. Uh, so let's say you're picking up uh, one of the attachments and, um, you know, and closing that. Uh, so that gets attached as a regular file attachment. It's not a link. It's just a straight uh, email attachment. And then it gets saved uh, into the storage in Salesforce. Um, you can close this button and you just go to the next step where you actually want to send uh, from maybe your own user, or maybe on behalf of someone, or maybe a global sender that has been defined, um, and then, or maybe the account owner. Uh, you may have multiple email addresses on the same object if you ever wanted to CC, like primary and secondary, you can do that. You can also BCC for compliance purposes. And then uh, once you're done, you can actually have the delivery options. Uh, you want to schedule it or you want to send it now. Uh, this is where you can specify the groups. Uh, if uh, it's a newsletter, whatnot, and this shows the email preferences uh, to the user. Uh, and you can have IP pool created, uh, even though the demo instance that I have does not have it. Uh, so you can have a different IP uh, being used for the marketing communication versus the transactional kind of a thing. If you want to suppress unsubscribe link, you can do that at runtime. Uh, and then uh, finally, you're just going to go uh, say, hey, I want to um, send it now. There's a preview button through which you can actually preview. Um, you can also uh, send test email by clicking on this. You can actually have comma separated values and select the mode and send a test email. Finally, if it's all looking good, all you need to do is just uh, click on this button called finish. And this sends an email and that would actually um, be logged as a, a record, custom record called mass mailer out, uh, outreach, uh, which will have the statistics information and certain meta information about the email that you've sent. Uh, so that way, 
uh, you can actually do uh, regular reporting on this particular object and then figure out uh, you know how is my campaign doing right so it's got all this info including the output statistics and we also show the real-time statistics as well uh, this is reportable because it's a custom object and on the specific uh, object itself we do um, log the activity history and also uh, we do have the email status um, even if it is opens and clicks all of that gets stored right here on the object itself you can see the activity history and also the events um, such as um, you know opened and clicked and delivered uh, processed all those events bounced uh, all those events get logged and if somebody clicked on something we also log the specific url that they click if somebody actually uh, i mean the email is invalid it bounced we also stored the bounce reason why it is bouncing uh, this is again a custom object in Salesforce, so you can actually report on this. It's linked to the specific record and it is uh, linked to the campaign, and all the event information is right there, uh, and it is reportable as well. Um, and how do you really support any object in uh, Mass Mailer? All you need to do is uh, very simple. Uh, you just have to go to your Mass Mailer setup screen. Again, it's a step through process, quite easy to understand. Um, I'm going to go through all the features though. Uh, so all you need to do is, hey, I want to uh, support my uh, custom object or any other object that you have email. Um, and then uh, you just have to come here, click on plus button and select whatever the specific um, object is and select the uh, specific field and then you're good to go. Uh, so that's as simple as that. Uh, and beyond that, you just have to add the respective buttons on the um, uh, the record itself, meaning, let's say uh, you want to send email from the Salesforce list view, you do have that feature, or maybe you want to send a single email from the specific record, again, you would have that feature called sending a mass mailer, and that's all what you need. So, um, I know we have 10 more, maybe five more minutes time here. Uh, not really going to get into much uh, details. I just want to show you one campaign. And then I'll open up uh, for any questions here. So if you're going to use campaign, no problem. You will have a button called send via mass mailer. And there are a few other features like mass mailer clone. You can clone it and remove any duplicates or unscheduled job. There are many features available from campaign. So if this feature is available, just want to kind of highlight. Having said that, uh, let me open up for any questions. Anybody have any questions? Nope, it doesn't sound like anybody has any questions. Okay, wonderful. All right. Um, so just to quickly uh, uh, kind of uh, highlight, uh, the pricing is uh, quite simple. Uh, you would have to kind of understand how many users are going to use Mass Mailer. Uh, based on that, we have pricing for $99.99. We do have a discount available for nonprofits and education institutes, so uh, that will be applied. And um, also, the second component is how many emails you're actually going to send. Uh, so based on uh, the email usage, uh, the calculation uh, can be made, and that would be a final price. Uh, and if you want to get started with MassMailer, just go to MassMailer.io as a free uh, trial button, or go to MassMailer.io slash install. Uh, config guide is also would be emailed back to you, and there's a demo video that would be emailed back to you when you actually get started. Uh, and if you have any questions about uh, standard email uh, capability of Salesforce or uh, with respect to email deliverability, feel free to send me an email. This is my uh, contact info, uh, siva.divaki at massmailer.io. And you can reach me at office or my uh, direct cell phone number. Uh, and again, if you ever wanted to just uh, uh, understand what MassMailer is, uh, just go to our website, massmailer.io. All the information is available, a lot of blog content as well. Um, and uh, many resources are available, um, and um, I'm sure we can help you and make you successful. Once again, thank you so much for the opportunity, Jim and uh, Farah, and I uh, hope um, I've uh, provided value uh, information today uh, for all of your uh, community members. Thank you. Thank you.